I direct you to my disclosure statement. I do have a financial interest in what I'm going to present. Uh, retinal degenerations include a number of very differing diseases. One is retinitis pigmentosa RP, which will be of particular interest for this talk. Another is age-related macular degeneration, which is a more common disease, um, but less severe. Uh, RP starts as night blindness, progresses to tunnel vision, and eventually results in total blindness for the patients. But both of these diseases and all retinal degenerations have in common the loss of photoreceptors, which are the rods and cones at the back of the retina. Um, and these cells are lost over the course of disease progression, and this results in the inability to see. Now, from a treatment perspective, as a cell treatment person, I have to ask the question, am I going to try to replace these photoreceptors, or am I going to try to use the cells to employ neuroprotection? And in our case, we decided to go with neuroprotection. So that's the idea that we can rescue the photoreceptors that are in the host eye. And here, I want to divide between the rods and the cones. It's the rods that are expressing the mutant disease genes, and these are the cells that degenerate first. However, rods are mainly just important for night vision. So if the disease stopped with rod degeneration, the patients would not actually go completely blind. Uh, it's the later involvement of the cone photoreceptors, which subserve the majority of human visual function, uh, that are critical to the disease progression uh, when the cones, which do not express the mutant gene, are lost late in the course of RP. Um, this results in severe visual def deficits for the patients. Now, if we could protect these cones that are not expressing the mutant gene, then we could have a huge impact on the problem. Now, which cells are we going to employ? Uh, we could use true stem cells, uh, such as you see on the left, such as the embryonic stem cells and induced pluripotent cells that are very popular. However, we focused on the use of the retinal progenitor, which is a tissue-specific cell found only in the developing retina. These cells are restricted to making cell types uh, that are found later in the retina. They do not make other cell types, such as blood, muscle, or pancreas. Um, but that's okay for our purposes. Now here's proof of principle in an animal model. On the left, you see an image of the treatment paradigm where the cells uh, seen in red are injected into the vitreous cavity of the eye. That's the large gel-filled space behind the lens and in front of the retina. The cells cluster to form these uh, neurospheres that um, survive for a period of time in the retina and from there, they can exude their trophic factors, which are going to have the therapeutic effect on the photoreceptors. Now, a retina taken from a RCS rat is seen in the central image. Um, these rats undergo a photoreceptor degeneration, much as seen in RP. Um, and now we segregate our rats into treated and untreated. And at the upper right is the on-foss image from a retina of a control animal, and you just don't see anything, and that's because the photoreceptors have all died and gone away. Uh, whereas in the lower right, you see a lot of uh, red and green dots. These are profiles that correspond to uh, rods and middle wavelength cone photoreceptors, respectively. So uh, by comparing the two, you can see that the treated eyes have uh, considerably more residual photoreceptors than do the untreated. So that's the evidence of a treatment effect. Uh, we back up this evidence with evidence of a functional improvement in these animals, and that's seen both through something called an optomotor response uh, in the upper image, as well as an electroretinogram seen in the lower image. Now we move on to our patients, and here I give you an overview of what we're attempting to do in the patients and pointing some of the highlights of this therapeutic approach versus other potential approaches. Now we're going to use these retinal progenitor cells. These are an allogeneic product. 
they can be taken from one unrelated donor and given to multiple recipients. As seen with these frozen vials here, the disease target is retinitis pigmentosa. The delivery is through intraocular injection, just as was seen in the rats, into the vitreous cavity. This can be performed in the office setting using topical numbing drops. And despite the fact that this is an allogeneic product, it can be given without immune suppression. That's the equivalent of getting a blood transfusion without the need to tissue type the blood. Uh, the mechanism of action here is neurotrophic as opposed to cell replacement as I previously described. Here's the setting of the initial clinical trial. This is when Kristen was getting treated. Uh, we enrolled our patients starting in June of 2015. Uh, the trial was completed by August of 2017, and all of the 28 patients in the initial trial completed that study. This product was well tolerated, and importantly, there were no immune issues. Uh, here's the visual output from these patients. Um, we've segregated the data in terms of the different doses and compared to the fellow eye. Uh, the point is the treated looked somewhat better and was particularly prominent for the highest dose, the 3 million dose. Uh, we had a benefit of nine letters on average in treated eyes over untreated eyes. Uh, that's quite a large response. Um, again, this was an open label study in small group of patients. Uh, but the FDA encouraged us to explore a higher dose. So we entered the people who had completed the first trial in an extension trial. And here you see Rosie. We followed these patients for a longer term, and these patients were allowed the option of being redosed in the fellow eye. Uh, 24 out of 28 of the patients were redosed. And again, despite being dosed in a second eye, uh, there were still no immune-related issues uh, related to this treatment. Um, that allowed us to move into phase 2b. Uh, this is a much larger study uh, involving a total of 84 patients. They were divided into three different dose types, 6 million cells, 3 million cells, and mock injection, which was the essentially uh, the equivalent of a, a placebo effect. Again, we were looking at visual acuity at 12 months, although we included some other endpoints. And uh, we completed the first aspect of this trial uh, in fall of last year, uh, although patients have crossed over into the treatment effect from the mock injection uh, following completion. Um, but looking at these initial data from the uh, tw initial 12-month study, we see that there was, again, a very well-tolerated product, good safety, um, consistent with what we saw in the first trial. Um, we also saw a prominent response in the highest dose, that being the 6 million dose. And uh, looked at more carefully, we see a nice relationship between the uh, proposed mechanism of action, the retinal anatomy, and test performance across the different um, other endpoints. So taken together, there's a nice uh, amount of information that we got from this that positions us very well to embark on a phase three study. I'd like to thank everybody, particularly CIRM, who's been an excellent partner at every step of the process, as well as the people from my lab and the clinical folks who carried out the clinical trials testing as well as people on the corporate side at JSite. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.